Whilst I'm waiting for parts I've ordered on both the GS550 and the CX500, I thought I'd make a, a quick video on essential tools that's needed to build a cafe racer, or to build any bike for that matter. Now at first I thought, should I create a video on the five most essential tools on building a bike? As I got thinking about it, I couldn't narrow it down to five essential tools that you'd need without needing the rest, if you know what I mean. So this video has sort of evolved into essential tools that you need. So it's gonna cover everything from hand tools, to welders, to all sorts. So I'll take you through it step by step, and I'll start off with what I was gonna put as my top five tools. So as you can see, I've got all my tools laid out on the wall here, which is super handy. It means that I can just grab whatever I need and I don't have to clutter about for it in the toolbox. I mean, I have got the tool chest there, but when you're opening drawers and you're trying to find a, a 22 mil spanner or whatever, and it's in the middle of all these other lots, it's just easy if you've got it right in front of you. Take. 22 or 19 off, whichever you want, and it's there. So what essentially is my number one tool is a good socket set. I mean, what I mean by good is not essentially the most expensive. We're all amateur mechanics. We don't own garages. We don't do this for a living. So we have to sort of settle for what we can really justify to spend. So as much as I'd love a snap-on kit, this has to do for me. So I've got my ratchets up here. So I'll lay them down there. So basically it's a comprehensive kit for every size that you need. And this one goes up to 20, oh sorry, 32 mil. All the way down to four mil. So it goes absolutely everything. And this is what I mean by a good tool set. So you've got all the extra extensions that you need. So there's not a single piece of kit missing from there. I have been meaning to put this on the wall as well, but you can buy these little neat strips that, that all the sockets clip into, so I might do that at some point. So I've got my spanners up here. Spanners are essential for any build. You're not really gonna go far with stripping an engine unless you have these. And if you can, make sure you've got two sizes of everything. If not, adjustable spanners are just as good. So obviously, if you've got a 14 mil uh, nut and bolt, on both sides that you want to do then then just resize that down to 14 mil and, and there you have it you have your spanners on both sides then so that's why it's always handy to have an adjustable as well as a spanner set these are absolutely brilliant it's a, a spanner ratchet basically uh, gets into all these tight spaces and it opens up one way flip it around and then it opens the other way genius for getting into those tight spaces where you need a spanner but then you don't want to be putting your spanner in, taking it out, putting it in, back out. This works an absolute treat, so it's definitely worth investing in this set. Now, I don't have that many sizes in these. These go in strange increments, so I've got 8, 10, 13, 14, 17. These kits are fairly pricey, so I've limited them to the sizes that I use most frequently. Mold grips, you get a lot of uses out of this, so definitely recommend a set of those. Pliers, long nose pliers, wire cutters, all in this one. A pop rivet set came in really handy when I was working on the GS550. It's brilliant, you're not gonna get through life without using a pop rivet set. They're not that expensive, and it's definitely worth investing in. Here I've got another set of wire cutters. Wire strippers, definitely gonna need one of these if you're doing your own wiring. Just makes the job a hell of a lot easier than trying to cut around with a scalpel, and then trying to, trying to take the sleeve off yourself. This just does it in one go for you. A volts multimeter, you don't have to invest a lot in these, but it's definitely worth it if you're gonna be doing your own electrics. A selection of G-clamps up here, all the way from six inches down to one inch there. Quick grips, always handy if you wanna be holding things together, so uh, bits of frame together or whatnot, you'll definitely find a use for those. Allen key set, absolutely necessary for any bike build. I've got metrics here and an imperial set. You're gonna run into imperials or metrics at some stage of your build, so best to have both here. The drill, you're not really gonna to go too far without a drill. It's a godsend when you're removing bolts, screws, and also if you invest in a good metal drill bit kit or set, uh, it's gonna make your life a lot easier when you're gonna be drilling things like these little indicators. So that was done using a metal drill bit. Next is a good screwdriver set. Make sure you've got a good selection from Phillips to flatheads. Especially flatheads when you come to do your carbs, that's one thing that you definitely need. I love this little piece of kit here. It's a simple 
circuit tester. Take the end off, attach one end to your negative, touch that on your positive, and if you've got a current, then your little light inside lights up orange. Brilliant if you want to set your ignition points, and even better if you want to see if your circuit for your bike rewire actually connects to everything. Here I've got my pressure testing kit, it's pretty simple. Test if you have compression in your tank, so uh, if you think you might have a, a bad piston or a bad piston ring or, or any leakages anywhere, this is perfect for that. And then all the little extensions that come with it here, so you can fit it into pretty much any kind of engine. Your carburetor synchronizers. Definitely recommend getting some of these, especially if you're going to be putting new pods in your bike or, or adjusting any carbs at all. You need to sync your carbs, otherwise your bike's going to be running like a bag of nails. They are fairly pricey for, for just a quick job, so if you don't want to spend on it, at least know someone which has a set. I'm going to move quickly over to my grinder here, or my, my cutter. You've probably see me using this on several videos. I don't think I'd get too far without that, especially for any frame modification or exhaust cutting or anything. I've got my selection of discs up here, I've got my, my cutting discs here, and my grinding discs, all there, which leads me up to my next tool, and that's a MIG welder. So here I've got my gas or gasless MIG welder. This can be uh, made as either one. I haven't actually used this one yet. This is newly purchased specifically for the CX500 behind me there. If you're gonna be doing any framework or any frame modification work, then invest in a MIG welder. You don't have to spend a lot, but it's definitely worth having one in your garage or workshop. So that's it, a quick rundown through all the tools that I use. Oh, feel the gauge, I forgot about that. If you're gonna be adjusting your points, then you're definitely gonna need a feeler gauge. You're gonna to need to know the, uh, the gap between your points and all sorts, so again, a small bit of kit, but makes a world of difference on getting your bike running properly. So yeah, like I said, that's it. That's all I've got in the workshop. Nothing more really. So spanners, sockets, ratchets, the basics really, screwdrivers, grinders, welders, all sorts. One thing I don't have at the moment is a compressor and a spray gun. I really want one of those. Uh, hopefully I might get one this next month. We'll see. Be a, but that would be a blessing when I come to, to respray this or even come to actually give this a new lease of life. I need to strip this whole tank down first before I start doing anything. And I am waiting for a seat for this. So for this weekend, hopefully I'm gonna start working on the engine for the CX500. That needs to be stripped down and cleaned. It's got years of dirt and all sorts on it. So that's gonna to have to be worked on. And in the meanwhile, I need to try and fix this tank here. So as usual, if you like what you see, subscribe. Or if you wanna keep up to date with these two bikes, then subscribe for that as well, and I'll see you next week.